Okay. Before we start this teaching, uh, this uh, our prayer session, I have this little teaching that the Lord gave me. So I want to add to what we have started since the last Saturday of uh, September. Okay, as an army, so of the Lord, amen, of the last, army of the last days, there are certain things we need, amen, certain things we need um, to know, to understand, amen. So, uh, last week we talked about true discipleship, when you are really, really a disciple of Christ, how you must grow until you become a person who is exactly like Christ, the way Christ is today, where you have a glorified body, you don't know, you never experience death, amen? So, and we talk about the five, what do you call it, step, believers, disciple, from the discipleship, you become a servant, amen? But now, uh, how to become a servant is what we talk about yesterday, amen? We talk about yesterday, so I'll do a little recap, what I say is that we know, remember that the not last week, but the previous we say that if you want to be glorified, first of all, you need to be justified, amen. Justified through your righteousness when your heart completely is given to God, is on God's side, then you are justified because there's nothing you love again if it's not the things of God. Then, so, uh, the first commandment. Is fulfilled in your life, amen. But now, when you are justified, you need to move to purity, where your mind, the mind, is the center of the soul. As a mind in the center of the soul, so your mind as well need to be purified. Where your mind is not going into any worldly things at all, but your mind is focused only on the things of God and nothing else, amen. The things of God and nothing else, amen. Uh, then, uh, after your mind is purified, then you can move to. Uh, what you call it to perfection and then when you go to perfection so you will be having you you are you move into the realm of god perfection you are in the realm of god so you don't do anything except what he tells you or what he shows you to do amen you have all the power but you are, it's not your power it's his power because you are one with him so whatever you have to do you have to listen to him before you do it okay but now yesterday what we look at is we look at uh, how you can live in the mind, you no, know, in the presence of God always. By living in the presence of God always, so your mind is not. So when you are living in the presence of God always, you are you have a purified mind, and your soul is purified. Your soul is always connected to God, connected to the realm of God, focus on the realm of God, not on the on the physical, not what your physical eyes and your physical ear hear, but what you are hearing them. Then you move now, you grow into his realm. When you grow into his realm, so your soul, amen, drop into your spirit and your spirit cover the souls. As the soul is the one who see through the physical, through the body, that related, we used to relate to the physical, then your spirit, as your soul drop into the your spirit grow until it covers your soul. Then now, whatever is, is in the spiritual, you see it. Whatever is in the physical, you see you 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 see it as well. Okay. So your eyes are open. Then this is what we call in Hebrew open continual vision, or we call makaze. But now, when we are praying, when we are praying till we reach the level where our the life is away of God grow into us and to grow into our soul. This way, we start having vision. You're having some open vision. Sometimes you have flashes. Sometimes you have open, not tangible vision. Sometimes you have open, uh, uh, open tangible vision. Or we, we grow into it. Because when you grow into the, his realm, this way you can attract demon like this. Okay, you can attract it with your hand. You can cut it. So whatever you can do with your physical body here is the same thing you can do with your spiritual body in the realm of the spirit physically. That's why you can destroy the more you can do anything you want to do. Amen. Anything you want to do. Amen. But now, what I want to tell you that everybody who has to grow into the dimension of God as we are teaching it, everyone need a, a, a people who before even the foundation of the world, God prepared them and God caused them. Amen. But now one thing I want to tell you is this. All of us, 
Okay, we will get there, you see. God prepare them. So, but people like that, the way your word, your mind works, and the way your heart works is different from the way the word is formatted and the, our culture or whatever. Amen. So, we are all rejected. You will be rejected. Okay, you will be rejected. Amen. People, because people don't understand you. Okay, you'll be rejected. People don't understand you. Sometimes people don't like you. Sometimes people persecute you and things like that. But actually, you are a specific solution to your society, your family, your, your country, your city. Or there is a problem because there are problems in this society, I mean, uh, on, the, on this earth. In many, many societies, but only God is the solution. Christ is the solution. But Christ is the solution for his chosen one, his people, people like you and I. Amen. So, but now we need to understand that what people like us, when we know God or we are designed to come and serve God in the high level, we will always be rejected. But now, how do you respond to rejection? How do you respond to rejection is what we are going to look at today. Amen. How do you respond to rejection? Because when you respond to rejection, but now when the way you respond to rejection is by going back, doing what I've said right now. Amen. You respond to rejection when you do all this, you see that at the end of the day, you can forfeit your destiny and go. Amen. Because many have come, they have not forfeit their destiny. But now what we call destiny, I want everybody to understand. Like uh, when I look at, uh, let's look at this phone right now. Okay, this phone. This phone right now is a Samsung. Okay, it's a Samsung. This phone, when I bought it, I bought it, it was in the package. I opened the package. And it was working 100%. But do you know that this phone has been used before? It has been used by the company. As it has been used by the company to check if every function that is in is working 100%. When, as they make sure everybody, everything is working 100%, this is where they restart it to manufacturer this thing. And now, and then they reset it to the manufacturer, uh, what do you call it? And they, they sent it. And then they, they put it in a package and sell it because they make sure it's working. So they use it before. They try it and use it before. And then the same thing, you and I, we have been used before in the realm of the spirit when God created us. Amen. But now, as he knew that we can, we, I know that we can work fine and he have created it perfectly for the specific reason why he sent us on earth, he sent us, he sent us on earth. But now, when we come on earth, what happened is that the society we are born in, the society formats us, model us one way or the other, and now we have to find Christ Start listening to the word of God, loving the word of God until you discover who you used to be in God before he sent you on earth. And then you discover what is your mission. And you have to work as a Samsung phone or as a, what do you call it? As a printer or as whatever he call you, he, he prepare you for. Then when you come and you did it perfectly, then you have achieved, you have reached and achieved your destiny. This is how destiny works. Amen. So when you understand it, Dada, now you can understand what I want to cheat today. Then you can understand, you start understanding yourself. When you start understanding yourself, you know that mm -mm, you are of God. You, you don't need to live like others. Let others live the way they want to live. But you, you have, you, you have, you have been sent for a solution, for a program. Amen. And God is counting on you because through you, he want to achieve something. Amen. So, uh, the title of the message is Your Rejection Shows That a Great Grace is Upon Your Life. Amen. A Great Grace is Upon Our Life. Every true disciple of Christ has a personality that makes people insecure or uncomfortable. Amen. Every true disciple of Christ. Amen. Because of that, they are all rejected where they are sent by God, amen, to save people from their problems. In, the, in this teaching, we are going to learn how to respond to rejections from people or in a new city or a new place. You don't need to fight people. You don't need to fight those who are rejecting you. 
You don't need to reject them back. But, or start crying because you are being rejected. You don't need to do that. What you need to do, you must always turn back to your maker. Who is your employer, employer that sent you on the field? Amen. To seek his divine abilities and power that will allow you to identify their problems with accuracy and solve them with divine abilities. But then when you start solving the problem, as they are in the problem, they reject you. Eh? But when you start now getting the divine ability through your fasting, prayer, intimacy, everything, and solving the problem, what happened now? Now they start liking you. Amen? Because every human being, like who cares for him, like who has his solution, the solution for his needs. Amen? So, let's look at Luke 9, 51 to 56. He said, now it came to pass when the time has come for him to be received, received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritan to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. So as the Samaritan, uh, well, the Samaritan at that point, Samaria, Samaria was the capital of Israel with the 11 tribes, okay? And Judah, well, Jerusalem was the capital of Judah with one tribe, the one led by David, Solomon, and all the rest, amen? So as he was Jew, so him and the Samaritan, they don't get on. I mean, they don't get on. Jew and Samaritans, Jew and the rest of Israel, they don't get on. I mean, they, they, they don't get on. I mean, they use not to get on. Okay, this is what I say. And when his disciple, 54, when, and when his disciple, James and John, saw this, they say, Lord, do you want us to come, command fire to come down from heaven? and consume them just like as Elijah did. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the son of man did not come to destroy men, men's life, but to save them. And they went to another village. So what we need to understand is that people will reject you. No people, people have been rejecting you or you have been rejected. So you yourself, you understand already, amen? You know what you are talking about. But now, how do you respond? You need to respond with who you are. You need to respond with who you really are in Christ by seeking Christ until you are, it is done. But now, listen to this very well. Eh? We are in Samaria. Eh? But now, Jesus rejected in Samaria a Samaritan village. He was the Samaritan village because he was a Jew of Judah. Amen. The apostle, amen, reacted because they were still in the flesh. The way they reacted, they were still in the flesh. That's why he said, you don't know which manner of spirit you are of. Amen. But Jesus told them that he did not come to fight those who reject us, but to save them. Later, Jesus instructed them to tarry in Jerusalem in prayer and fasting until they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And then they can be his witnesses where? In Jude Jerusalem, the whole Judea, and in Samaria until the end of the earth. Amen. So, how do you respond? You respond to all those who rejected you, but when they are rejecting you, rejecting you, you discover that there is something wrong with them. But they will not know that there's something wrong with them. You discover they have problem. You discover they need something. But you are the very solution. It's like Moses. Moses, when he discovered that the, his fellow Israelites were in what? Slavery. <coughs> 
He needed to save them. But the solution, the human solution he wanted to use to save them, that solution would not be effective. So he needed to go away to fight to die and find the power of God and walk and come with the power of God. Amen. To come with the power of God. And when he come, once he comes with the power of God, he was able to deliver them. Amen. So there's a lot of problem whatever everywhere. That's why I'll say I will say that if we can have two, two to five true disciples by country, by country, two to five disciples, a true disciple by country, we will be able to raise them, amen, to this to the level where they, they will enter the realm of the father. The eyes are open from, uh, uh, permanently, but now as you enter his realm and you are seeing him all the time, seeing him all the time, what's going to happen? You will now, the energy that comes out of him will be coming into you all the time. As it, that energy is coming into you all the time, that energy is what is going to glorify you, transfigure you. Then you see that when Moses went into his realm, he reached the level where you see the face, the continents of uh, the, the, the face of Moses was transfigured, changing. Amen. If like Moses continued going, Moses will not die. Would have not died. Amen. Will change. Amen. You can see Elijah. Elijah as well was somebody who used to do face to face with God because he entered the realms of God. That's why I taught in uh, uh, in, in church yesterday how to live in His presence until you enter His realm. When you enter His realm, then you are seeing Him all the time. Amen. You are talking like that. You praise like that. You can see Him. You can do this. You can do this. Or whatever you need. You will see him, amen, because your body will be changing. Your body will be changing, and then you are, can see him. Because we need to get to that level. Because when the Bible say, or, or Jesus say, we are the light of the world. We are the solution of the world. The Bible cannot be saying something and we are not seeing it. No, it has to be it will happen. Amen. And it, it sent us to go and make disciples, not to gather people in church. Amen. Take people, teach them. Amen. Theoretically and practically. Amen. Theoretically and practically. No manipulating anybody. Amen. But it, the way we are doing it is tough. It's not deep, it's not fun, it's not a decent because nobody has done something serious is in fun. No, you want to do it is something serious. Amen. But those who love God, when they discover it, they are looking for it, they find it, they will come. Those who don't love God, they won't come, they won't come back. They will not waste our time either or waste, waste their own time as well. Amen. So let's go. So let's look at Acts. What he say? Act 1, verse 4. He said, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sent you the gift he promised, as I told you. Now look at what this is. Verse 8. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. When uh, you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout the Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You see, we have a lot of evangelists today that need the glorious power of God. Or every Christian, actually, every disciple need to grow to that level because before you become, if you are a true disciple, before you become a, ser a servant, because when the apostle receive that power, this is where you become, you become a servant. So we have a lot of pastors today, they are not servants of God. You have to enter the glory, start the glory, at least the first dimension of the glory before heaven calls you servant. Amen. Because for you, heaven is going to serve. Amen. So you are in the glory. Amen. So, he said, men always reject what they don't, they are not used to. Amen. They are not used to. Amen. We have many problems everywhere. Knowing that Christ is the solution to all our problems in the world, we must understand that he is the solution through his true disciple that will grow to become servant. His servant. Amen. He's seven because you can't say you are a servant of God and you can never see your, your boss. No, a servant of God needs to enter his realm and you are seeing him. And I'm not saying this to discourage anybody, but I want to encourage you. So if you can take the route we are talking about, you see that you will not struggle. I mean, you will not struggle because the apostles, don't, don't forget, they were casting out devil, healing the sick, 
while they were with Jesus, while he sent them two by two, amen, but he, they needed to receive the glory. When, when the tangible, when the, the, when the fire came, amen, the tongue of fire came, all of them, their eyes were open, they was able to see it. So they entered his realm. And when you enter his realm, when you are preaching, evangelism is minimal. Amen. Everything you are doing, evangelism is minimal. So that's why it's very, very important that we put on fasting and we put on prayer. Amen. Prayer in tongue. Very, very important. Amen. Then when you put your prayer in tongue down, you need to be growing in the seven dimensions of seven steps of transformations of your life, of your body, of your soul, of your spirit. Then you can get there. When you get there, you see that you have you will achieve amen what we are talking about is not church grow or whatever no our own destiny why you have come on earth you have come on earth for something amen now we need to discover it but the more you pray with intimacy you're gonna discover fully what is the plan of god upon your life amen what's the plan of god upon life? so let's go where are we baba so every true disciple of christ knows that he is in the world to solve problems that only God can solve. Every true disciple, you know that you have not come just to do this, do that. No, 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 no. Amen. So you, you come with something great upon your life. That's why when you are talking, nobody's listening to you. You are doing, no, people don't consider you. But God is doing on purpose for you to have sense and come to him to get what you have to get. Then people can listen to you. Amen. But if you start crying, oh me, I'm da, oh da, 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 there's no problem. Uh, uh, you, you, you have a failure, a, a, mant a mentality of somebody who's a, 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 who fails, who are fails. Amen. Oh. So you are not helping yourself. Oh, Lord, first challenge to commence. Amen. You are not helping yourself. So it's important that we understand this. So he said, therefore, once we receive our burdens, amen, you can see people the way they are disabled, or you see people, the way they are poor, things like that. God, you go, you are petitioning God. You can see the things, the problem today. But God can take 15 years to make you millionaire or billionaire because that is what is in your mind. Amen. But as you are growing, you are paying your tax, you are helping little by little. The little that is coming, you are little. Bit. God said, okay, this one, his heart is really dedicated. He can do the job. God will bless you. Then you are helping the poor. You put a system in place and you are helping the poor. Amen. And it, God will give you a business and business will help you. And the money will be coming all the time and you are helping the poor. If it's uh, uh, to heal people, you get the healing power, you are healing people. If it's to help family, you are. So whatever is the problem, the burdens, that whatever is on earth, that is not as it's supposed to be or as it is in heaven. As you, you identify it, and uh, is the way what you have been tested, what you have been created for, and you see God sent you on earth, not because somebody is doing it and uh, it getting popular. You want to copy? Don't copy anybody. Amen. Don't copy anybody. You are unique. You are unique. Amen. So there is something specific. Amen. That God attached to each one. But now some of us, God will put us together in team to work. Amen. To work together. A fit. A a a. Effectively, so we need to understand this. Let's go. So, uh, once we identify our burdens or we receive our burden, we must see God for others until the divine solution comes into us. Amen. Divine solution come into us. And one thing we must not forget is Hebrew eleven verses. It said, "But without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must always." know that he is God and he is the rewarder of those who seek him diligently. Those who seek him diligently. So if you know that he is God and he do exist, then you have faith. You'll be praying, you'll be praying, you'll be praying until you, but now when you start praying, you just see him with the eyes of your heart. But when you Persevere, you enter his realm and you are seeing him the way you see him. I mean, the way you see him. Hallelujah. So every disciple of Christ must see Christ with all his heart until he finds his destiny. Amen. I he finds his destiny. That's why I want to tell you that whatever you are called for, you have been used. 
blessed by God. And God knew that you are uh, knew that you are perfect, that you are he sent you. And he sent you and throw you into a man. When you are being released as a seed, five millions of you, you beat five million people to be the one who infected the egg of your mom, of your mother, of your mother. And now when you came out, that means you are already a champion. As you are already a champion, why now when you are in a country or you are in a community that are less than five million, you cannot overcome and to do what you have come to do. You have to overcome and to do what you have come to do. Anything that has happened, that's not a problem. We are in, we are in the church where we have the present, the tangible presence of God. So there's nothing if you give your heart and you trust God and you are coming regularly, the power of God will not flash everything that the devil have deposited in you and rebuild you completely and make you whole for what he has he, he have created you for. Amen. So one thing we need to know is that regardless of whatever the enemy throw at you, you always overcome. Amen. So he said to Jesus, listen to this, Revelation 13, verse 8. All who dwell, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose name has not been written in the book of the life. Amen. Uh, amen. Whose name has not been written in the, uh, um, the book of uh, life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the, the world. So you see that Jesus, because be, since the foundation of this world, Jesus has been tested, slain. Amen? He accepted to be slain and have been tested and he was slain since the foundation of this earth. So at some moment, God now sent him on earth to do exactly what he tested him and he did perfectly in the realm of the spirit before he sent him on earth. Amen? But now look, Jeremiah 115. He said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you to be prophet to the nation. So you can see that God knows us. God does not choose things and give us burdens or give us mission just for the sake to, to give us mission. No, he knows who you are. But now as he has created as you free will, if you refuse to do it, God will start training somebody who is the backup. Start raising somebody because before he does something, he will send like maybe eight people. Like I can tell you, those, the two prophets that are going to fight the Antichrist, God sent a, a runner on earth, God sent eight people. Among the eight, two are going to be selected to, 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 to fight the Antichrist. That uh, Revelation 13. Amen. And even among the eight, there's one person who backslided. Amen. Who backslided. Mm, okay, I won't give the data. Who backslided? When he backslided, so me, I, I knew God told me. Amen. So it's important. Okay. It's important we understand. So God is a master planner. As he's a master planner, you knew very well that he has given us free will. So but it's a privilege if you know your duty and you stand up for it. At the end, you are the one who will be smiling and will be happy, thanking God that he helped you to go through all the difficulty, the desert, uh, the, the wilderness, everything until you achieve it. Amen. So bear, know that when you want to achieve this thing, there will always be obstacle. But one thing we must know in one, First John 5, 4, it says, for whatever is born of God overcome the world. Whatever is born of God overcome the world. So if we are born, your burdens, the burden that you are fighting for, the, 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 whatever you want to be, the solution for or, God, or you want God to be the solution through you, you want to be the vessel, God, or you know that you are the vessel through whom God is going to, to deliver people or to help people, amen, know that you will overcome the world. Anything that is in this world, including Satan, that decided to fight you, they fell before they started. You know that you must be courageous, as he told Joshua, be courageous, amen, focus and be disciplined, 
Focus and be courageous. Amen. He said, whatever, for whatever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So you are seeing the world the way God sees the world. You are seeing this life the way God sees the life. That's what we call faith. You are in God's logic. That's what we call faith. Amen. So a disciple of Christ that receives no burdens of God for the interest of others or for the interest of people and pray and pay the price to solve those problems. Amen. With divine abilities and power. The disciple who cannot do that, that disciple has failed. That disciple has failed. Amen. So you are not a failure and you will not go to fail. We are not going to fail. So let's be courageous and face whatever burden that is there. But regardless, or maybe at your level, you don't know what is God has called you for. But as we are together and we are praying, we are fasting, we are persevering, I know for sure God will reveal each one the role each one of us has to play, amen? Because me, I believe it's wrong to belong to Christ and to belong to a church where you have nothing to do. You just come and sit down and go. When you look at all the worldly in the world, the Bible say uh, the children of this world are wiser than children of the light. Why? Because there's no company right now. Somebody will go, Every time go to that company and sit down, do nothing, just to be watching others working and go back home. No, that's why the church is supposed to be the top, but we are the top because we are not making everybody disciple, everybody workers. I mean, everybody must be disciple, everybody will be workers. I mean, but come in any time you want, come in any how you want, come in, come in any day you want, some day you come, some day you don't come, and things like that. You are not making yourself valuable in the eyes of God. Whatever God calls you for, he will reject you and put somebody else there. Amen? Put somebody else there. And in eternity, you will regret. I can remember a, God sent me to heaven one day, what a great mathematician, very great mathematician on earth. What he has, he couldn't have, he has what you call like a pigeon gold. Amen. He was sitting down, his head was shaved, he was wearing a robe, just reading because he has a lot of books. He was reading, reading because in heaven as well, he was doing reading, reading, reading. He was just reading, just there, sad, alone. Amen. I saw you. It's one Sunday morning, God took me to heaven to see him. So, you see, just to tell that you don't want to fail. Amen. So, I'll say, God bless you. So, we need to uh, uh, start praying, but before we need to start praying, right now, through your prayers, amen, you must do everything to become the vessel Christ needs to overcome. The challenges that are in your family, even if a challenges like a, a, some altar that are fighting challenge in the family or whatever, you must become the vessel, amen? You must become the vessel because wherever you are must be spiritually clean, amen? The, you must be the vessel Christ can use to overcome the challenges that are in your congregations, the challenges that are in your city, and the challenges that are in your countries. Whatever is not of God must not survive around you because you are God. Potentially, you are God. So you must grow until you become fully like Christ. Then anything that is around you, you are God and you'll be able to face it. Amen. I will say God, Bless you, and I will stop here. But anybody who come across this message, if you don't have a church, join us. Amen. Our address is this: join us, and we will train you this. Or if this is something that you know that you have called for and you want, join us. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Um.